Hey everyone, I see a lot of people wondering how investors or traders on the Robinhood platform are doing. As you may or may not know, Robinhood lists their most popular stocks according to the number of people on their platform that own those stocks. And so I wanted to take a look and see how those people did over the last month by comparing the top 15 Robinhood stocks to the performance of the S&P. So I'll get to that in a second. I also wanted to cover the TD Ameritrade Investor Movement Index or IMX because in this new report, they talk about their millennials and their buying behavior in terms of what stocks they're purchasing and what stocks they're selling. And I don't know about you, but I hear and read a lot about how, and people like Jim Cramer talk about how millennials really don't like oil companies and they favor things like Tesla. But it's sort of interesting because at least according to the TD Ameritrade data, uh, the results of people's behavior is a little bit different. So they talk about how in January, the millennials bought Exxon Mobil Corp and Uber but when it came to selling, and these are all on a net basis, so when you net out the buys and the sells, what do people do? But the millennials on their platform net sold Micron and Fitbit and Tesla. This is also interesting about Tesla because the big run up in the stock really didn't happen until after earnings. I mean, the stock had a great January, but the huge moves on the Monday and Tuesday after earnings were in February. So anyway, I thought that was sort of interesting. And by the way, while we're talking about Fitbit, I'm really curious to know if anybody watching has an opinion on GoPro because Google announced that they're purchasing Fitbit and the deal hasn't closed yet. So Fitbit is trading at a little bit of a discount to the deal price. It's about 11% or so because the deal hasn't been approved yet. But anyway, Google announced that they're acquiring Fitbit and GoPro sort of fits into that same category of dominating and owning a real niche where they put out fantastic products. And I don't know, maybe even people like GoPro products better than Fitbit. Um, I have a GoPro product. I don't have any Fitbit products. But you can see that on an EV to revenues basis, so an enterprise value to revenue basis, that Fitbit after the merger, at least according to the Y charts data, is valued at about 0.84 times sales, whereas GoPro is valued at about 0.5 times sales. So of course, there's no merger premium in GoPro, but they are cheap, at least on that one metric. And here's another interesting one, which is if these numbers are correct, then Fitbit is actually losing money at the EBITDA line and GoPro is making money at the EBITDA line. And so Fitbit's valuation is sort of not comparable. I mean, you get a negative value, but if this is right, then GoPro is only trading at around 5.8 times EV to EBITDA, which is really pretty cheap. So anyway, looking through this data just sort of brought up that question. So here are the top stocks held by people on the Robinhood platform. And one thing that's important to note is that these are just the top stocks, not by dollar amount, but by the number of people who own them. So I don't really know how to convert the amount of dollars to the number of people that own these stocks. For example, Aurora Cannabis is number one. It's very possible that just tons of people own ACB, but they don't hold very much of it. And so for that reason, you know, this whole analysis could be totally wrong. But in any event, just making the assumption for a second that people hold roughly the same amount of stock, then ACB is the top stock on the Robinhood platform. And I cut it off at 15 because once you get to 15, you hit Tesla. So uh, in any event... I was really surprised to see a couple of these names up at the way top. And similarly to the TD Ameritrade data, it really kind of shows you that if you assume mostly young people and millennials are on the Robinhood platform, that their big holdings include things like Ford, um, which is like anathema to a lot of Tesla owners right now. Um, GE, which is sort of an interesting one. Maybe I'll talk about that one day. Um, Microsoft, and I actually did a video on that a couple of days ago. GoPro I just discussed, Fitbit I just discussed. So the performance figures occur over the last month. So from January 13th, and by the way, January 11th was a Saturday. So, but January 13th to February 11th, the last month of performance, 
And the simple average, I didn't weight it or anything like that. The simple average is 1.6% positive performance. And that compares to the S&P over the same time period of positive 2.1 performance. So if you just look at the top 15 stocks held by the people on Robinhood, then the S&P outperformed those people a little bit. And if you take out ACB and Ford, then the performance jumps up to 3.4. But let's just say we chop off the outliers. So we get rid of Hexo, which was down 16%, and Tesla, which was up 47.5. Then basically the results go to flat. So anyway, I just found not so much the performance interesting, but just really the top holdings, or at least by the number of people on the platform, uh, the top holdings in Robinhood to be something that wasn't exactly what I expected. And by the way, uh, just a shout out to robintrack.net. They do a really good job of uh, compiling all of this data and they have really interesting charts showing basically how the number of users holding a stock changed over a period of time and they plot it relative to the stock chart. So, you know, Ford, for example, it's pretty interesting. Basically, you know, the stock has sort of gone from 1150 to eight. And over that time period, people have steadily been accumulating, or at least, again, the number of users owning Ford stock has steadily increased. And this is going back to May of 2018. So if we just look at one year, then we'd start right around here in February of 2019. And the number of users holding Ford stock went from 220,000 all the way up to basically 360,000 today. So anyway, that's Ford. Basically, the stock has been going down and the people on Robinhood have been loading up. Uh, and let's just take a quick look at Tesla and see how people have been trading this one. This is also very interesting. So fascinating, actually. So the number of users holding Tesla peaked on June 13th, 2019, basically right when Tesla stock was at the lows and people were dumping the stock or people were abandoning the stock basically all the way up until the third quarter. And then that trend turned around and kind of went parabolic, just like the stock in, uh, in January of this year. So that's really, really interesting. And actually, if you haven't seen my video on technical analysis, I, I know that the title's a little bit silly and some people have commented about that, but it's called uh, Made 5 Billion Using Technical Analysis. And I talk a little bit about the phases that a stock or a market goes through when it's experiencing a bull trend. And really the first phase does look a lot like this, where you basically have people abandon the stock or an idea because of short-term poor performance. And what happens after people really start to abandon and forget about a company or an idea or an investment is that long-term investors start to step in. Long-term investors who see value start to step in and take advantage of those discouraged sellers. And you can sort of see that this is what happened here because the stock really stabilized as people on Robinhood abandoned the stock. And then people on Robinhood came back in, but that was after the stock had already gone back up. So the people stepping in here were really smart and really kicked off sort of this, I don't know, this bull run that Tesla had. And um, again, just another interesting piece of data. Why? And uh, what you said something that really fascinates me. There was a point until very recently where Elon Musk did not feel financially secure enough to buy his own home. Uh, exactly. That's exactly right. Remember a few years ago, there was that divorce filing that came out in the press where he said that he was essentially broke. You know, he was making alimony payments, uh, child custody payments, and also he was funding Tesla, all in his all on his own money. Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see it's true, but the world is pretty cold. You might need a sweater too. I'ma put a ride on ya. Came from California, trying to make it in life. It's school that never taught ya. Dreams of my own, I've been working from home. I can do it on my own, but sometimes it gets cold like.
the moments when I was thought as a joke. 